What's up guys and welcome to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. Today we're covering the insane rise and fall of Ike Batista. Batista was a Brazilian mining and oil tycoon whose net worth reached a peak of $35 billion in 2011. He founded the EBX Group, which was an industrial powerhouse in Brazil throughout the 2000s and early 2010s. Bloomberg ranked him among the top 50 most influential people in global finance that year. Things were looking up for Batista. With $35 billion, he was the richest man in Brazil by far and the 8th richest man in the world. However, in just two years, his entire business empire came crumbling down. His net worth declined more than 100% from $35 billion to less than zero. He now faces 30 years in prison on corruption charges. In this video, we'll go over who Ike Batista is, how he built up his $35 billion mining and oil empire, and how it came crumbling down in epic fashion. Ike was born in Brazil in 1956. From a young age, he had exposure to the country's mining industry. His father, Elisir Batista, was the Minister of Mines and Energy for the Brazilian state of Jao Goulart, as well as the president of state-owned mining company Vale Inc. In 1974, he left for Germany where he studied metallurgical engineering at the University of Aachen. After graduating, he moved back to Brazil where he started working in the mining industry as a salesman. He contacted gold and diamond miners in Brazil's remote Amazon regions and connected them to wealthy buyers in metropolitan areas of Brazil as well as foreign countries. He was very good at finding gold and diamond fresh from mines at cheap prices. This allowed him to quickly make a name for himself in Brazil's thriving precious metals industry. In 1979, when Ike was just 23 years old, he started his own gold trading firm which he named Autrim Aram. One year later, he sold the business for $6 million. He took those profits and started his own mining company, EBX. He invested in state-of-the-art machinery and created the first ever alluvial gold mining plant in the Amazon region. Alluvial gold mining is the process of sifting gold out of creeks and rivers. At the time, the Amazon had vast amounts of untapped gold in its waterways. Ike made huge profits by mining the gold in this new system. Ike reinvested the profits and raised money through debt financing to fund the expansion of EBX. He built new mines in Brazil, Canada, and Chile. He also expanded vertically into other industries. He created subsidiaries CCX, which did coal mining, MMX, which did metals mining, OGX, which did oil and gas drilling, and finally OSX, which did shipping and offshore logistics. Each subsidiary was listed separately on the Brazilian Stock Exchange. Every subsidiary had the letter X at the end, as Batista thought the letter X represents the multiplication of wealth. Initially, these businesses worked out quite well. Throughout the 2000s, the price of gold steadily increased. This was massively beneficial to EBX as gold mining was their main business. On the backdrop of high gold prices, Ike was able to borrow tens of billions of dollars through debt financing from the public markets to fund EBX's growth. Of EBX's subsidiaries, OGX, the oil and gas extraction company, was the most significant. In 2007, Brazil's state-owned oil exploration company Petrobras found massive new offshore oil reserves off the coast of Rio de Janeiro. This was a massive find that promised to turn Brazil into a global oil powerhouse. Initial estimates measured these new oil fields as the third biggest in the world. Batista saw this as an opportunity, and just a month after the discovery was announced, he started his new company OGX to take advantage of the offshore oil. Given Batista's strong track record in the gold mining industry, investors were more than willing to fund his project. He raised $1.3 billion in private investments in 2007 and an additional $4.1 billion in 2008 in a blockbuster IPO. This IPO was the biggest in Brazil's history at the time. This $5.4 billion of investments came before OGX had produced a single drop of oil. The company had a public market valuation of roughly $45 billion at the peak. He used this money to buy the rights to newly discovered offshore oil blocks from the Brazilian government. He hired former Petrobras CEO Francisco Gross to be in charge of OGX's operations. This high-profile hire gave investors confidence that OGX could succeed at developing these untapped oil reserves. They made some exploratory wells to test how much oil was in these patches. In 2010, they claimed 90% of the exploration wells successfully found oil, and they estimated the total value of the oil reserves at $1 trillion. At the time, oil prices were also on a tear on the back of strong demand from China and supply constraint from OPEC. This greatly benefited OGX. These favorable commodity price movements sent EBX's companies to the moon. In 2011, 
Ike Batista's stake in his companies was worth an estimated $35 billion, making him the richest man in Brazil and the eighth richest man in the world. He was very confident in his companies and told Forbes magazine that he would become the world's richest man by 2015. However, in 2012, things started to fall apart. The price of gold started to decline from its peak. The declines weren't that massive, but EBX took on so much debt assuming gold would continue increasing. With gold decreasing, they were not able to make their interest payments. Even more problematic than the fall in gold price was Batista's OGX oil company. They had claimed that they would produce 750,000 barrels of oil per day. As it turns out, they grossly overestimated the oil reserves, and in 2013, they were only producing 15,000, 2% of their projected output. This revelation caused OGX's share price to fall by more than 91% in 2013. With such meager production, OGX was not able to make interest payments on its $5 billion debt load and was forced to declare bankruptcy in 2013. This rendered the equity worthless. His other companies faced similar hardships as they were burdened with excessive debt and Brazil's economy was slowing. Batista's shipping company, OSX, declined in value by more than 99% from the peak and is now a worthless penny stock. All of the share prices of the EBX subsidiaries were going close to zero. This completely wiped out Batista's $35 billion net worth. Unable to pay his debts, police raided Batista's home, seizing his luxury assets including his Lamborghini Aventador in 2015. He was also criminally charged with insider trading. He allegedly stole $85 million of company stock when he discovered OGX's offshore fields would miss production forecasts. Given his debts and legal liabilities, his net worth is now estimated to be negative $1.2 billion. And Batista's legal troubles were about to get even worse. In 2017, Brazilian authorities issued a warrant for his arrest relating to his involvement in a bribery scandal. Batista paid $16 million to Rio State Governor Sergio Cabral. Sergio, in exchange, awarded Batista's companies lucrative government contracts at above market rates. Batista's arrest was part of the broad corruption probe called Operation Car Wash. Operation Car Wash was a crackdown on corruption, which saw more than 1,000 arrests of government officials and business executives. Ike then fled to New York in an attempt to evade capture. Unfortunately, the U.S. and Brazil have an extradition treaty, so U.S. authorities apprehended him and handed him over to Brazilian police. In 2018, Batista was convicted and sentenced to a 30-year jail sentence. This will likely be a life imprisonment as he would be over 90 years old at the time of his release. The story of Ike Batista is a truly sobering tale. He went from a billionaire to an inmate in the span of just a few years. His initial success with gold mining in the Amazon was incredibly impressive. Had he continued to build more gold mines at a moderate pace without taking on too much debt, he would likely still be a billionaire today. However, he got greedy and wanted to become the world's richest man. His early success gave him hubris and he thought that he could be successful in any venture he took on. This motivated him to create new subsidiaries in areas that he had no expertise in. As investor expectations grew, he was forced to exaggerate his company's prospects to justify their skyrocketing share prices. He also resorted to corruption in an attempt to reach his overly ambitious growth targets. The epic fall of EBX is a cautionary tale about what happens when a business expands too aggressively and takes on too much debt. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. If you like the content, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for future videos. Also make sure to check out our second channel, WSM Research, where we post DD on high growth stocks. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.